gloves on. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Senior Commissioner, I'm going to call the meeting to order. Um, this is a organizational meeting and informational meeting of the commissioners to employees and in general. We have um, down there. We have. Do we have any? Oh, here's one. We'll have to share this. this is all I've got left. Yeah. First, the first item on the agenda is the commissioners have to decide who is going to be the chair of the board of commissioners. And I got pointed at. I have a question. Do we need to have figure out who's going to be the third commissioner before no. we decide? No. Because who? Huh? Well, where does it Says state me. that? Okay, well, but where me. is that? You don't have to decide to have a third commissioner before you decide to have a chair. Okay, this is a procedural issue. Okay, we are already investigating other potential candidates. Okay. And will that be decided once we have the potential candidates? I realize we can move forward at the minute, but will that be at a meeting where those people are evaluated or Official representative to the budget committee. You want to go? No, I will. <laughs> <laughs> no, the question is, do you want to? Because then you have to do all the budget committee meetings. Um, from experience, during this period of time until about the beginning of October, there's probably one a quarter. Then after that, they go down to like once every two weeks and once a week. And they're quite numerous. And I, just, uh, I, I have to be honest with you about that. It's usually I'm not that many times. Um, but, um, but I can make myself a little more. It's once or twice a week. Once or twice a week? Or once or twice a month? Monday. Okay. All right. There is a meeting tomorrow night. Can you make it? want to be the ex officio representative and then defer to another commissioner, that's permitted. Because it happens fairly frequently. Okay. All right? So you'll be ex officio. You, you complete number one? Yes, I got voted in because he pointed at me. And I didn't object. Does there need to be a motion or? Are you a commissioner? I'm not. Okay, then. Unfortunately, we don't take public comment. He pointed at me and nominated me. Essentially, you're voting yes. Yes, as chair. Unless you say no. No, I'm not. And I vote yes. And there are Therefore, minutes. the vote is made. There are minutes for recording it. Yeah. And we're videotaping it. Great. It will be on our videos tomorrow morning. Now, quick question, if you don't mind me butting in here briefly. <laughs> so, ex officio, you will go to the budget committee meetings, and then you, as the chair of the commissioners, what? Role does that give you over Robert? Or just as the I chair, what what does that mean? That means that I am supposedly the principal contact person okay. for the commissioners. Okay. okay? Um, if Bob can't make it to a budget committee meeting, I would have to attend. Okay, it couldn't be the third person. Well, yes, if, 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 yes, okay. yes, it could. Okay. Yes. The but the water and sewer district needs to attend or represent itself ex officio at the budget committee meetings. Right. Yeah, for that. I mean, the school board 
frequently changes representatives. Sometimes the selectmen do. It's just, you know, someone's got to be there to represent that interest. And Brian, one more question. The chair also becomes the owner of the system, correct? Owner of the system? Correct. What system? The water and sewer district as a whole. So The commissioners do. Okay. There's the not one? Mm -mm. Okay. Mm -mm. The commissioners as a whole. The commissioners have absolute authority over the district. Understood. But By state law. But the state has to be able to communicate with one of the officials from the board. Pro forma, that would be to the chair. Okay. So that'd be and then it would be copied to the other commissioners. Okay. Standard policy anywhere. Huh? Standard policy right. anywhere. Standard policy. Oh, much nice There's a chain it's of command, yeah. and the chair is the titular head. Mm -hmm. Titular, but not an absolute. Okay. But the commissioners, yes, they are... They have total response. Well, they have responsibility, legal and moral responsibility over the district. Okay, we are the final makers of decisions. Sure, it's your opinion. Okay. Uh, any more questions? No. <laughs> sure. Going in once. Going twice. Okay. This is a general outline of things I'd like to cover tonight. Initially, can I have a spare one there? Okay. I have the same one back. Stand back. Thank you. For our deal. Thank you. Now, all of this will get voted on by the commissioners at the end as to whether or not it's official policy. But first, we're going to go through it. First of all, because of, in the light of the vote that happened on the 26th, that's democracy. Whether we like it or not, that's what the voters said. And that's the way it's got to be, because that's the law. We can't disregard anything the voters told us to do. Okay? First of all, all non-emergency projects, whether or not approved in the original budget, are placed on hold until reviewed by the commissioners. We're going to review them. Absolutely no spending or commitments are to be made to vendors or contractors until the review is made, completed, and the projects are approved, modified, or canceled by the commissioners. Parenthetically, we may go along, we may say this is a perfectly good idea, we agree with you, the prices are right, but we still have the right to review. We don't go forward until the commissioners act on that. If non-emergency spending is needed for operational reasons, please prepare a purchase order and request approval from the commissioner prior to buying. Please. In fact, at number four, it goes into more detail. All employees of the districts are reminded that the Board of Commissioners, the commissioners, is responsible for the administration of the district. We are legally responsible, and I just said that moments ago. All employees are directed to assist the board in reviewing operations and financial records of the district, including those which are in the computer. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have a question on that. It's my understanding that they are not, as I have found that we're in the government, on an official government computer, and they're not readily available. Is that correct or not correct? Yeah. Wait. The contents of the computers are how should I put this? Okay, the contents of the computer are public information except for that which is exempt under 91A. Yeah, so, with 91A. Yeah. And people have the right to view anything that is not otherwise restricted by 91A. Are the The district. The district. Yes, they are. And that's what I want yeah. to find out. Okay. Well, it's property and assets of the district. Okay. You have a question? That? Oh, sorry, I also got No, I well I have a question back on number one. I don't know if you want to okay. go through go them ahead. all and then have ahead. us go back. Well, with number one. So <laughs> you're saying a request.
request approval by the commissioners. Yes. And how accessible are you guys going to be? I live right up here. Well, I know that you are pretty accessible yeah. on a regular basis. I'm not sure what your status is. Do you all three have to approve? No. One of the things we're going to talk about is delegating approval using best judgment to a single uh, commissioner because not all the selectmen sign the checks. Not all the selectmen approve uh, vendor payments. It's usually delegated to one person, and that will be something we will discuss. But again, it's if I get run over by a truck, Bob's here. And a third commissioner, you're not going to get run over by a truck. Uh, huh? Doubtful. Yeah, very doubtful. That person would be able to do it, using their best judgments in the interests of the district. Okay. Are they going to be able to back up their best judgment call? I mean, it seems like it might just be... Reasonable judgment is enough. I mean, there's a concept in government that you do your best. You know, that's the best you can do. No, I just, if it comes down nope. to like one person's best judgment, it is a team to be able to make... That would be cumbersome, and you know, I, it's just cumbersome. I mean, do you really want to submit vendors and purchase orders once a month? No, no. I just, but so you will be very. If you are the one chosen to make those judgment calls, you're going to be very accountable. Both of us are. Okay. Yeah, the way it's written looks like you need multiple commissioners for approval. The way this is written, you do not need multiple commissioners. Best judgment is what is the ruling. Here. Place on hold until reviewed by the commissioners. No emergency. But by yeah. at least one of the we, we will clarify that in a moment. Thank you. May I ask for you to clarify what the what was voted on on the twenty sixth before we delve into this being a direct result well, of that? Because you're you're supposing that this all aligns with what was voted on. So I'd like to see. No, it doesn't align with what was voted on. What was voted on was a budget. Okay. This is a policy. This is separate. Okay. But these were generated in light of the budget adjustments. But this is not what was voted on. This is your no. interpretation of how you're going to execute on what was voted on. This is within the purview and authority of the commissioners to establish policies to execute the duties of the district. And this is, an, just like we have a personnel policy, we will have a purchasing policy, hopefully, in the near future. We will have a financial controls policy in the near future. And this is simply policy. It will be added to the book. Okay. And nothing it, exists. It's not usurping something that exists today. Oh, no. This, 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 this has basis in law. How about the commissioner, the district policy? The commission, this has not been voted on by the commissioners. So there was no policy in place for a non-emergency This type emergency. of stuff, no. There was no written policy. There was convention, there was tradition, but there wasn't a written policy. And now there's going to be written policy. And this is what was proposed based on what was voted on on the 26th? No. This is policy, not budget. What we voted on on the 26th was a budget, not policy. So this, this simply effectuates the, uh, the budget and certain policies that have to go forward. Just so you know, having run some organizations, you have to have policies and procedures. And if there weren't any in place, or even if there were, then people come in and adjust accordingly. And this is part of the procedure you do whenever you take over any organization. Review with the employees so that they know what the playing field is. Right. It's not fair to them, it's not fair to the rate payers. So, starting with policies, starting with some recommendations as to how things go is good best practices. I'm not, I've been on plenty of boards, plenty of organizations, Fortune 100 companies, I get it. I'm just, these seem arbitrary when connected to a budget vote. And that's why I'm asking. And not connected to a budget. Problem. Well, that's it's what I was. <laughs> the personnel policy wasn't voted on at the annual meeting. 
and it never is. Okay. But we have a personnel policy. Okay. These are procedural policies. That's all it is. And it's, they are not taking place of anything that is already in existence for this organization? Not that I'm aware of. I think some things were done by tradition or habit or whatever, but we're trying to sort of codify them. I'm just trying to understand the process here. I mean, where? Okay. Well, this is how government policy is done. May I add something? I think sure. I think the reason you're having confusion is because your first paragraph says, as a result of that meeting. Mm -hmm. And maybe if you took that paragraph out and just called it purchasing policy, then it would... It's not just purchasing. Because or, it's not just purchasing. Call it policy, you know, 2019-001 or, or something, but, but because it's relating to that first paragraph, I think that's confusing. I, I, the reason this was drafted, and this is now in draft status, was to clarify and focus some of the procedures that were traditional, unwritten, understood, often confused, un understood, and all we're doing is we're trying to build up a policy uh, policies and procedures so that people understand what's expected and what will happen. It just clarifies things, gives people something to hang their hat on, as it were. I agree with you, and I commend that effort. Okay. I still think the first paragraph is not related to the rest of it, though, when it's confusing. Yeah, yeah. Thank okay. you. Now, we'll when you, I know we don't have to draw the past, but when you were a commissioner previously, Mm -hmm. You don't, there weren't any of these things no. of... Well, we had a fine... Them, then. We had a fine tradition of everybody understood this was how it was to be done. And that, unfortunately, leads to misinterpretation as time passes. So we're just putting it down and writing. There was no personnel policy. That didn't come until 2010. There were ideas, there were traditions, but now there's a personnel policy. And that's a good thing. And this is a procedural policy. Okay? Yeah, no, I'm not against it. I'm just saying. Just wondering. Okay. All right. Uh, Reemphasizing, all employees of the district are reminded that the Board of Commissioners are responsible for the administration of the district. We are the chief executive officers. Okay? No one supplants our authority. We have to be clear about that. Everything comes to the top, and we're the top. <clears throat> no changes to payroll, including wages and benefits, will be made whether or not approved by original proposed budget without prior written approval of the commissioners. So if there was some discussion about sometime this summer I'm going to get a raise, we're going to have to review it. It isn't going to be automatic. In addition, there will be no new hiring of employees unless reviewed and approved by the commissioners. The commissioners are the legal employer of all staff, except elected officials, and decide if a new hire is needed or warranted. Okay? We are the official employer. We decide. So as a result of that, what qualifications do the commissioners need to have in order to be decision-making? We're elected. The question becomes, what makes any politician qualified? Okay, More than so a fair share of them are wholly unqualified. You know? Mm -hmm. You can say that about uh, just about any branch of government. The point is, once you're elected, whether you like it or not, because of the people that are running the Plain and just. Right. 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 State law conveys to us these, this authority. You know, we may be absolute idiots, but we're still elected. And that gives us certain authority. So question about the payroll adjustments. Yes. If the employees were hired under a contract that stated they were going to receive specific increases on their annual basis, how is that going to be handled? Well, first of all, there has to be a contract. Yeah. And a contract can, in this state can only last one year unless it's approved by 60% of the voters. Okay. So a contract that's more than one year lapses at the end of the year. That's the law. RSA 33, for those who'd like to look it up. Purchases. No purchases will be made in excess of $100 unless the purchases for usual and customary consumables. 
such as utilities, consumable supplies, chemicals, and so forth for the lab, regularly purchased for district operations and minor equipment that must be replaced on a regular basis. Or, a purchase order must be submitted to the commissioners for review and justification prior to ordering. And this goes back to the issue of approval of purchase orders. We've got to be fairly strict. $80,000 got taken out of the proposed budget. We have to watch our pennies. That's life. Actually, it's not a bad idea anyway. At some point, that $100 limit may get raised, but for right now, that's it, as I propose it. A system of reporting tasks performed by employees should be completed each week. Issues needing the immediate attention of the commissioners between regularly scheduled meetings should be brought to their attention, that is the commissioners, via email or phone call. We'd like to know what you're doing. We are the bosses. We are the employers. So we'd like to know what you're doing. Yes? Can you explain reporting tasks, please? All I ask, all I would ask, and I'll wait till Bob says otherwise, is a list of what, I mean, do you keep a calendar, your activities? Okay, well, that's what I'm looking for initially. I'd like to know who's doing what, who's responsible for what, because down the road, we'd like to propose having job descriptions so that when we do evaluations, we have something to go on as a standard. Most big organizations have job descriptions, and they ask, did you perform this task? Did you perform this one? That's what it's for. We've got job descriptions right here that we've... Excellent question. Then we'll look at them. Am I included in this? In your That's in terms of the employee portion, yes. Yeah. Superintendent in your elected race. position, no, you're an economist in that regard. I probably need to sit down and hold that with you. Sure. Okay, I would like to propose to my fellow commissioners that we adopt these as preliminary procedural matters. Agree? And I agree. It is unanimously passed. have the personnel manual, which is a policy and procedures manual for personnel. In it, you asked once about what's a policy on training. It's in the manual. It is. Okay. Um, and again, it's, if, I'm, if you want to go to training, you've got to ask us first. Don't just encumber us. Yes. You brought up a good point. I should ask you. Sure. Possible without disturbing here. Um, as the superintendent, I presume you decide who is ready and what is needed for advanced training, etc. Or repetitive training, repetitive recertifications, etc. I don't decide the state does. So the state well, I understand dictates that. it based on the license and it's held. But you decide this month, next month, so that the management of the day to day operation, you don't send all. Three people gone. Yeah. Okay. We, I, I presume you did. Some, I just want to we sure. employed some, you know, opportunities to do book training that didn't require anybody leaving. So right. um, there's different, there's flexible options for the CEUs, um, but the CEUs are dictated by the state per the licensing. Yeah. Most so, licensing they all have CEUs mm -hmm. that they have to accomplish. And is that recertification every two years or year? Two years. As a general rule, if anyone's thinking of taking an enrichment course, you probably at this point in time it's probably not going to get a favorable response from us. Okay, the bank and the public deposit signatures. You have all that material, and we can get started. Oops, sorry. So that is for That's the first thing we gotta do. Yes, we gotta get you. Sign next to your name so that you're an authorized signer. There are more usually more forms that come with this. That's all that she sent to me. We it's a secured email. She says that's the last thing that she needed to 
have it taken care of. Sure. We can yeah. call her together tomorrow if you would like. No, no, it's like when I do it for the town, it's like seven pages long. Yeah. It's a full corporate resolution as far as I can tell. They've got I'm a US person signature. That might help might need to be me because I'm the only one left that's the current you know what I mean I'm on the account and so Oh well okay. Sign it yeah. and then drop it in the fax machine. Okay. I have to look up the fax number. I hope you see that after. Right on. Okay. Well, we don't have to talk. You're presenting us with checks. In the future, I would like the invoices that go with them to be attached to the check so I know that Seacoast Analytical Services, although I know who they are, uh, it's a legitimate company. That is fine. Yep, I mean, I, they're right back there and I can easily grab them, but yes, I will do that in the future. You swear to God that these are all legit? I swear to God. You want to sign them? Also, if you look on back here, I mean, well, it's obviously not exactly like super informative, but um, on the, there are, is more information there. But I can get you the invoices too. Yes. So that's for three different when phone I, lines. When I do the checks at the town, and I have someone here who can verify it, I always match up the invoices to the checks because I like to see who is this. Well, I do that when I'm working through them, of course. But when I'm going to get the uh, signer, I don't usually bring like ten folders along with me. But oh, no, I no, can do that. The, the the general procedure you would, I might suggest you use is this: hold out everything that's going to be a payable. Okay, keep the invoices with it. Then, when the checks are signed, you take the stub, staple it to the invoice, and then file it, rather than file it first. I know it's neater, but people consolidate can you find health stuff? trust. Oh. Health trust is for the um, life insurance oh. or disability. Okay. Yes, and it's usually a biggie. It no. isn't here. Oh. No. That's why I asked. I thought it was We might be more frugal than you think. Give me a chance. I'll show you how frugal I can be. Which as someone told me yesterday, there's a difference between frugal and cheap. Consolidated Communications. Um, hold on. Yep. Hussey Septic. Septic calling. I even know what it's for. Universe, I know what it's all for. Go for it. And that's all the checks you have? For right now, yeah. I'm sure there's probably more things sitting right over there for me to crank through in the okay. next day or two, but. I'd like a report. Can you listen and sign checks too? Sure. I'd like to ask my question first. Uh -huh. Who's our EP enterprises? That is, let me just look at the back of that. I don't want to get lost in the brain because that was a new one. Who was it? Small amount. It's our EP. Oh, um, Ray, this was for maintenance for the plow for oh. the truck. I just never saw it. I'd like to know, can someone give me a concise explanation of the status of operations of the water and sewer districts? What is it that you're looking for exactly, Vern? Give me a thumbnail. Is everything running fine? Uh, is there any equipment problems? Uh, are we meeting our testing standards and limits? So, yes to all of that. We're meeting our testing standards. Uh, we did have equipment failure. I bounced that off you. We yes. had a chemical feed pump fail. Um, I just placed an order for a replacement 
and also a backup. We didn't have a backup. Uh, we're coming into phosphorus season, and the pump that runs our phosphorus uh, additive, the chemical that we use, um, is is going to be questionable for startup. So uh, it's in our best interest to have that in place now. Are these feed pumps like the um, like what we used to have for the sodium hydroxide? Because they got eaten through by I don't the know what you've had in the past. What we're so using now, they're, they're, they're peristaltic uh, chemical feed pumps. So they're, they are yeah. designed for chemical. And they generally don't last very long. I would disagree. I think, but Clem, didn't we have to run through a whole bunch of them? The only problem I had now was it was chlorine. It wasn't like it is now with the, I mean, the additional clarifier that's down there. Yeah. And we had the drying beds back then. Which, you know, a lot of things have changed since I was here 12 years uh, well. 20 years ago. Yeah, but I seem to remember that yeah. chemical feed pumps die fairly quickly. And I don't know why. How, about how much is a chemical feed pump these days? $1,100. So you're going to buy two of them? We bought two of them. Okay. okay. In the future, purchase order. Sure. Yeah. Um, you have two, so one's on the shelf in case one fails? Correct. So and they're completely compatible with all chemicals, so if it was a chlorine pump or a Right. So part of the uh, chemical addition and upgrade throughout the district was to go to one pump throughout the district, which is a peristaltic blue and white chemical feed pump, 24 gallons a day. They're all the same. They're all interchangeable. So if we run into an issue and we need to pull one from a location in an emergency, we have that flexibility. Uh, but we have been holding off on having that spare on the shelf. Okay. Is that part of the $1,700 improvement? Seventeen thousand dollars. Seventeen thousand. Yeah, no, that's a separate, separate. Okay, so that's current operating. Correct. Budget. Sewer. What's our daily? What's our daily outflow? What's our daily inflow? We're putting out about seventy-five thousand gallons a day. Really? Um, I'm assuming the new house is uh, behind the church there. Uh, no, they're not all on there. No, they had septic systems. Back. Only one of them is on there. Mm -hmm. no. What does our current, albeit old, permit give us for a maximum effluent discharge? What are you looking for? I seem to recall something about 65,000 gallons per day. Well, we've got... Would you like to review it? Well, uh, no, I would like to know that 14-year-old permit it right had a, you know, design specification for I. I thought it was sixty-five thousand gallons per day. I don't. I don't have a max output per day on this. Okay. I'm, uh, what I'm. My parameters are based on DOD, GSS, phosphorus, pH, okay. uh, and terephthalate. Um, we okay. are built to a design. We're not. We're not at design, and I don't know the number that we're. But other than that, there are no issues in the sewer district at, at this, this time. time? No. Okay. Everything's running smoothly. We're meeting our requirements. We are meeting our requirements as of this moment. Good enough. Any other matters? Any other questions? When do you take public comment? It's not on the... It's been going on all along. Well, I, I'm just used to going to other meetings where they designate public comment sessions. We tend to be a little more liberal about that unless it becomes burdensome. Okay. So my concern is, is that everything's running fine at the moment, and these policies that you have are going into effect for the market adjust for the adjustment due to the um, vote on March 26th. Right. Um, have you had a chance to review the budget and decide where you're going to be reducing things? And how does it affect what the town passed? Because this is three questions so far. Let's oh. go to the first one. Okay. What's the first question? Um, well, you've already answered it that you don't have a public comment session. <laughs> right. Good. Number two. Um, have you reviewed the budget and decided where you're going to withdraw the money that was taken in. I've already taken a preliminary look, but I need more detail. Okay, and number three, how does it affect the town budget since 
the water sewer budget was part of the town budget. No, it is not. It isn't. Okay. We are totally autonomous, just like the school. So it is a separate budget in itself. That's a, we are a separate municipality. So we might as well be South Berwick. Okay. It's self pay basically. Right. And so will you be adjusting rates for the removal of the eighty thousand dollars? No. Not at this time. So the rate increases are still projected to be what the previous commissioner said? Rates will be determined based on analysis of need. Okay. That's all I can say at this point, because I have to do a fairly deep analysis in order to determine what the rates should be. And then I will bring it back to the commissioners and recommend something based on the analysis I do. Okay. And I don't know if the commissioners can answer this question or if it goes to the superintendent. Wait, wait, let's, let's do something new here. So, does anybody else have a question? I do. Okay. Um, so you're talking about Hold that thought. you are going to do all the analysis and figure out where it should go. I'm not going to do all the analysis. I'm going to do analysis. So it is a we, isn't it? I mean. I started. Okay. I mean, this is this is what I did for a career. I did I did financial analysis. Okay, so okay, I, I started. I trace all the expenses, all the incomes, the trends, and then I come back and I say, based on the information I have here, and I will lay it out. This is what I think we ought to do. Well, I hope that you and will. I have plenty of experience in that area. Great. No, I'm looking forward to hearing about it. Um, but. Also, please know that nobody knows it better than we do, when, so when we can I, help uh, like provide insight into why different we items. We will be asking you for information. Now, Celia, do. back to you. One question. Come on, let's be fair. I'm not sure that the commissioners can answer this. That's maybe more for the superintendent. But I want to know, has there been anything in the last, since the last, um, has there been anything that I should be concerned about drinking the water or with the system in general? Sure. So, would you like me to answer that, Vernon? Well, I, I'd like to preface it with, despite some comments I have heard in out there, uh, we're not turning into Detroit. We're not anywhere close to that. Sure. Would that be a fair estimate? We're not Detroit. No. And no, and we're not even close to it. Well, I can answer the question, but okay, go ahead. Then. Sure. So. We've made strides in the last year that were based on the way this, the way we were functioning as a team, right? So the old commission, uh, myself, Allison, Kate, and the rest of the operations staff were operating as a team. They were taking input from us, and they were uh, utilizing that to help expedite the process, right? So when I came on board 18 months ago, we did have some very substantial issues. One of them was an arsenic violation. Um, we were also um, having issues with corrosion control, which leads to the potential of lead and copper being leached into your water. Now, those situations aren't at every house, at every curb stop, but depending on the age of your home, depending on your plumbing, there's a potential. In the last 12 months, we've made huge strides in correcting that. So we've implemented a chemical feed system at General Sullivan that is automated, that is maintaining the, uh, maintaining the ranges and the parameters that we want to see on a regular basis. We've, we've created SOP on a daily basis to be checking right. these right. parameters. State, standard operating procedure. Yes. People may not know what SOP means. Sure. So standard operating procedures um, so that we're at the facilities, we're at the, we're at the wells, we're in the distribution system, we're checking at multiple locations to make sure that the balance is seen throughout the whole system, which is minimizing that corrosion issue. Okay. So we've also implemented the addition of a polyorthophosphate blend, which is a chemical that helps sequester um, and coat the pipes of some of these old cast iron pipes and potentially lead services going into homes so that that lead doesn't have the ability to leach into the water. What happens with lead is the water sits in the pipe over an extended period of time. 
and after a six hour period, that's the benchmark, the, the lead leaches into the water. Now, depending on how much lead is available or at those joints, depends on what that level goes to. Um, so we've done, uh, we've really done a good job getting over the hurdle. Um, we've come back into compliance with the state, which has cut our need for, uh, cut our need down substantially for testing. We were testing twice a year at 24 sites. It was $1,000 per round of testing. We just cut that down to once a year and only 10 sites. So it's a substantial savings there in getting to the right place, um, but it, it took the investment on the Rawlinswood Water and Sewer District to get the equipment and invest in having extra staff so that we could maintain these type of procedures. So I hope that answers your question, but that's where we're at. And as long as we have the ability to continue operating in that manner, things will be great. Any more questions, Celia? I need a moment. Uh, I'll defer to anybody else who might have a question. Next question. question. Willie Street. You put a flush at the bottom of the hill down there into the stream. Mm -hmm. Are you dumping water with chlorine into that stream? No, we're not dumping water into chlorine. Actually, the... the We've got one step, one phase left to that installation, which is going to be a diverter that goes right into the manhole. And the whole, we got the hydrant in at the last minute at the end of the season before the frost hit. Um, but that's a conversation I'll be having with the commissioners because we need to implement that last phase so that we can truly flush that low hydrant. I was under the impression that was a temporary fix. And they're going to replace a water line on the street. You're right. And I've seen the water comes out of those that line in the houses. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, I'd be pissed. I would too. I'd be absolutely I'd be pissed. pissed. So what are we projecting for a replacement of the line? What, what are you looking for? If that was temporary. It was a year or two ago now that's been done? No, it was actually about six months ago that we got so you that put, you put the thing flushing in. hydrant in. But the problem with the water then has been going on longer than that. It's been going on since um, way before my time yeah. come. Uh, it's been, that can's been getting kicked for about 10 years. So what are we looking at for working well, to replace the water? In this budget line? that we proposed, there's, uh, there's discussion about replacing Willie Street and the cost of that, uh, and, and it was projected for 2020 to replace the whole line. So that should show the Warren article then? It would be a Warren article. Yeah. Yeah, it, would, wouldn't yeah. Be on, it wouldn't be in place till next year. Okay. But that research, that study's been done. We've got hard numbers on it. It's today's numbers. Obviously, it'll change next year. Oh, yeah, I understand. I went through the process before. Yeah. So um, we've got the figures on what it's going to cost to replace it. Um, it's just a matter of it, the goal was we've got um, our benzene uh, benzene bond is going to drop off in 2021. The goal was to piggyback that bond from when it drops off to do the replacement on Willie Street. Because the replacement on Willie Street is about fifteen hundred to two thousand dollar more in carrying cost for the for the for the loan. So it would be a small, you know, increase in terms of what we're already carrying to get Willie Street addressed. But what we're doing on Willie Street right now is proven to work. Um, the PO4 addition is, I've talked to all the residents on Willie Street in the last month, and I've got nothing but good response back yeah, in terms of... So Mike Dagnall was talking about. So it's moving in the right direction, but there's no doubt that it's a, it, we know it's a Band-Aid, but we had to do something for those oh, yeah. folks because it was, I, I mean, the water quality that was coming in here was, it was not acceptable. Hmm. So. I, I can't imagine taking a bath or a shower with that in there. Really Lots of filters. Anything else? When can we meet again? Tuesdays are good. Tuesdays are good. Okay, Very thank you. Good. Yeah. Actually, I think two weeks from tonight on a Tuesday. Tuesday. But I'd like to do it a little later because it would be a commissioner's meeting. What's four? The 15th. 15th. Okay. 2 plus 14 is? Yeah, 16. 15th is Monday. 16th. Huh? 16th. 16th, yeah. So 416, 19. I'd like to leave 
meet a little later, like 6 o'clock? Would that be what you said? 6.30. Can we be meeting regular meeting? This is going to be the, there is no such thing actually as a regular meeting. It's going to be a public meeting. Uh, we will have an agenda sent out in advance. So I don't need to write up an agenda anymore? Um, I will send you meetings. items I would like to see on the agenda, and then you can send it out. And I will, and I will post this. I will post the meeting for this. Okay. okay. Well, will I have the opportunity to add to that agenda? Everybody is allowed to. I mean, we haven't stopped you tonight. You know, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just asking what I need to be good input. Yeah, I'd like to be able to put, input. you know, that, that's how we were working in the past. I would add some stuff to the agenda. Um, I got a question in regards to, um, you know, holding of all funding or all spending. One here, one line item here talks about uh, contractors. Jackson Hoyt has been on the staff as a subcontractor. Is he to be held off right wait now? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Theoretically, you have a written contract with Wright Pierce, Pierce Wright, Wright Pierce, to provide this service. Correct? Jackson's not Jackson's affiliated Jackson with Wright Hoyt is our is our mechanic that's on retainer right now. Do you have a, a, a memo of understanding, an agreement? A... I do. I got, I'll, pull, I'll get something together for you. Okay, and what we have for this on. meeting if we could talk about a couple of these. Sure. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm just, I'm okay. just curious if I'm continuing on with it because I've got projects lined up, so. Anything that's a contract longer than one year is not valid. They have to be either renewed or terminated. Because that's state law. It's not a year long, so it's, it's less, than less than a year. Yes. Well, let's let's talk about that. I mean, sense. right. Afterwards. We can talk about good. it. Yeah. We can talk about it at the next meeting, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, question. question. I got one question. You bring somebody in from the outside to work. They're required to post a certificate of insurance, make sure they're covered while they're working here. Yeah. I don't want to assume liability for that. I would assume that the natural procedures for a I should be, but you know, sometimes it doesn't happen. This is Jackson's certificate of insurance, just so you know. Yeah, we'll okay. well, right. well, I'm more concerned it's, about If that was the question, Clem. Well, no, that wasn't referring to them. Okay. Okay. Yeah. General, I was talking general. Yeah. Yeah. Making contractors in one night, I mean, you got to have something to cover themselves. This, this gentleman who's the on-call person is Jackson what? Jackson Hoy. He's not on-call. He's, he's functioning as, um, he's... Function as a mechanic right now, but he's a subcontractor. Of whom? His self, for his own business. And then he's he's not a subcontractor. He's a contractor. He's, he's a contractor. He's contracted. Okay. He's contracted out. Okay. Yeah. We're going to need certificate of coverage. Uh, we're going to need some sort of an agreement between him and the district about these are the services you provide and this is what we will pay you. Right. We don't need a contract. But we need a, at least a memorandum of understanding. Okay. Question? Um, yeah. So there will be a meeting next Tuesday. Are we going? No, two weeks. Two or, weeks. Sorry, I meant to say that. Um, in two weeks. Are we setting up a regular monthly schedule, or are we going to, every time we meet, then talk about the next one? Rob, we will probably, I'm suggesting we might want to meet at least twice a month for the near future, yeah, at, at least, least initially. initially. And then, depending upon how things smooth out, then we will go from there and make a decision. Umpty umpty um, millions of years ago, they met more than once a month. Mm -hmm. Dinosaurs walked the earth, and mm -hmm. volcanoes were all over the place. But you were here now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I always walked into that one. Yes, yes, I was here. Yeah, no. I sat around the fire and I listened to uh -huh. the stories. There. I got one question. How much uh, feed, feedback is the superintendent going to have on the actual budget and when you guys are going over it and reviewing well, some projects? That comes to us. Right that comes yeah. to us. I'll be included in all that. Because I just, every time in any area of this town, they always seem to not do preventative maintenance. And then things become a major catastrophe. I mean, you should bring that yeah. up because that's near and dear to my heart and part of the reason why. Several other people talking. So, preventative maintenance. Preventative maintenance. Future planning will be key to it. That's what we want to I read in the minutes about a leaking diesel generator, I believe, here at the plant. 
What about the one at Porter Wells? What about the one at General John Sutherland? What about the one at the Foundry Street pumping station? When were they last serviced? That's a rhetorical question, but I'm going to be looking for answers like that. Perfectly yes. fine, because I have them. They're serviced on a, a biannual, twice a year. They're serviced on a minor and a major, okay. twice a year. Okay. I'm so, not standard. I mean, I'm sure. That's, yeah, yeah, that's fairly standard. That is very yeah. standard. Yeah. Fairly standard. Yeah. Because Small because emergency you, backup. I, I assume you run it periodically. You run it with an exercise yeah. cycle built into the it. The ones on the remote sites are, have exercise built in. The one at the facility here we run. Okay. I walk past, I drive past that generator on Thunder Street. And I say, "Oh, my boy, that thing is beautiful." Okay. It, it doesn't go to you because you work. It's, it's I, no, I, I already have one. I already have one, and I love it. Uh, anything else? Because now I'm going to call, make a mo motion for, for us to go into executive session, which means it's non-public. Are we allowed to ask why? Pardon? Are we allowed to ask why? Yes, we will be discussing. Uh, what is discussed is covered under RSA 91A3 personnel. Right, I'm just curious which part. Paragraph 2. Uh, paragraph I I. So that the non-public means just you two. Well, actually, I'm going to ask you to stay. I'm going to ask you to stay because you are staff, but only for part of it. And I would like to sit down with you while we're in that too. Okay. On some basics. During during the executive session or after. Afterwards. Oh, okay. Afterwards. All right. If, if you've got the time. Well, it depends on how long your executive session is going. I'm not sitting around waiting, guys. So if, if you want something to discuss with me, we can do it prior to. Would you like to do a, a recess? Yeah. We can do a recess. Yeah, do a recess. Okay, go into about five minutes later. Okay, then there's no vote yet on going into executive session. Okay. May I ask a question about the third commissioner? We're looking for one. Yeah, Pat Kalouski would like that he wasn't able to be here today, but he'd like to get here to get a good background with the over. What we would like is anyone who's interested is to just send us a letter of interest. Okay. One well, quick, quick question. What, what do you guys have for experience with wastewater and water treatment? Any or I'm just curious. With us or yeah, any potential is running the plants? Yeah. Not, not as far as dealing with them? Yeah. The military, I had to overlook it. One of the guys that testified recently down at Payes back in December about the problems they had, because that crap goes back to the 80s. Oh, yeah. It goes back to the 70s. So I'm no, fully we're aware of what happens if you don't maintain it. Okay. We don't have wastewater or water distribution system licenses, but we have experience working with this plan. Okay. I was the one that watched that bond for that building go through, and for the water system throughout the town and the sewer system throughout, go around the town. I watched them build that water tower up on the hill. Amazing thing. What era were you a commissioner? Just curious. What year? Victorian. <laughs> no, I didn't feel like that. I'm just I'm trying trying to it was like that was a couple yeah, of years. You were waiting for that. Yes. And it makes me a caveman. It was, it was quite a while. It was 20 years ago, maybe? You were in the 80s. Yeah. Water Whenever tower that built building was built was when I left. So I left when they combined water and sewer together. We were only separate at that point in time. That was the early 90s. I was here when it was a combined district. Yeah. Oh, well, no, you were with me for a while. Not long. I'm, as whatever it may be. Whatever it may be. <laughs> okay. I was just curious. Okay. All right. You want? Yeah. We want to. Do you want to keep it as part of the meeting, or do you want to recess? And Just speak recess. With okay, we'll have a recess for 10 minutes. I think we're going to be meeting to meet you. Come on, man. be a list many people. We're at least comfortable. And then there's a bar downstairs. Yeah. Where are you?